The Adaptive Technology Program at Inglis empowers people with disabilities to use technologies. It's alternative input devices for computers, tablets, smartphones. Adaptive technology is more of a bridge between the user and the computer. Technology is more of what, the way everybody uses it differently because it opens up so many things that they used to do are starting to do. Adaptive technology to me is at its most fundamental independence. It's allowing people to do things that they couldn't do for themselves before, um, to give people greater authority over their own life for fewer things they have to ask other people to do for them. It's something we're really proud to support here at Inglis. Using adapted or alternative input devices, we began to implement those technologies about 20 years ago. Then we went from perhaps 12 of our residents being able to use the computer lab to over 150 that we're servicing in-house today. You can't put a price tag on showing people a pathway to doing something that they had no idea was possible. We've expanded the technologies. We have eye gaze technologies, voice activated technologies, single switch access to a computer, tablet, or smartphone. Being able to use the internet um, proficiently with my voice, um, it gives me a, um, it gives me the ability to continue doing something that I love. Um, you know, as since I'm a quadriplegic, that I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't have it. Voice recognition in general, I mean, for Ron has been a really big deal for him because he used to not come up to the lab at all. But now he's up almost every single day. He watches all his favorite TV shows, watch concerts, and it's opened up a whole new side of him that we haven't seen before. We proactively went after a grant from Pew Charitable Trust to fund our community computing program. And in the first three years of that grant, uh, we successfully trained 230-some individuals living in the community with disabilities and to help empower them to pursue jobs, careers, um, socialization, uh, independently shop from home. It's very empowering and I think that's what's exciting. The smart home technology that we're uh, building into our community living programs is important because it's enabling people to feel really in control of their own environment, their own home. Being able to communicate with people, being able to pay bills online, being able to purchase things online, that is independence in itself. I see artists and people who thought that they could never paint again or never be able to create art, um, and I see it every day now. These tools have helped them get back into it. When they thought something wasn't possible, uh, we showed them an option and now it is possible. We don't use a curriculum, we actually use a goals-based approach so that we're able to hone in on the skills and desires of the individual that's allowed a grandmother to use Skype to communicate with her family who are located across the country so she sees her daughter and her grandchildren through Skype. That gave me a sense of empowerment that I could do things without the help of others. I could have private conversations. All of our residents go through an assessment and training period so that they learn to use these adaptive technologies based on what their physical abilities are. Stuart, who's a resident here at Inglis, has severe mobility restrictions. A really smart guy, but if you're a smart guy who can't turn the page in a book, how do you study? How do you read? A technical setup that allows him to project books onto a TV screen and use an electronic device to turn those pages independently is just a monumental difference. An example of technology really having a concrete impact on someone's quality of life and independence. We're not just plugging in smart home technology. We are doing it in such a way where we're engaging with the person. It's not just kind of plug and play. We're really adapting it to that person and then helping them use it well. Trying to predict where technology is going to go for people with disabilities, it's really wide open. I can envision bringing a lot of really smart people together from the technology world and from the medical world and the people 
for whom we're trying to develop solutions and really have them play together and create solutions that are gonna serve them, but also serve the world.